Hey, Tony Gerard for Shawnee College Science in Seconds. If you watch a lot of these things, you know that I'm a big fan of snakes and salamanders. And out here on my property, I've put out pieces of tin, just as nice places for snakes to get under. So we're out here flipping tin, hoping to find, oh gosh, oh gosh, come here. Um, look at here. This is a nice one. This is a, a black king snake. We have a couple different members of the king snake family here in southern Illinois. Uh, we've got prairie king snakes and we've got milk snakes, actually a type of king snake. And then we got this guy, the black king snake. These guys are particularly abundant here around my house. And they get the name king snake because they eat other snakes, even our local venomous ones. They're actually immune to the venom of our local snakes the, that are venomous, the copperheads and cottonmouth and rattlesnakes. They also eat lizards and they also eat mice. And looking here, we've got this, uh, this mouse nest or a field mouse nest, a vole nest. And I bet if we were, the voles are probably inside this guy right about now. He's kind of dull. Looks like he's gonna, hasn't shed his skin yet this year. Looks like he's potentially got a little couple of fungus patches from being wet over hibernation, but probably just now coming out. One of the things about king snakes, incidentally, notice he doesn't have much of a neck. The body just kind of stays the same thickness and then goes into a head. A lot of other snakes are water snakes, garter snakes, and things like that have a very distinct neck, rat snakes, but king snakes really don't. So that is a black king snake, and this is about a uh, full-grown adult size. Uh, boy, I said that uh, that they are immune to the venom of our local snakes, and man, other snakes avoid these guys like crazy. How cool is that? 